Today we're talking all about computers for music production. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name's Noah, I make music is haterade, and you're watching The Productive Producer. Before we get started, I wanted to mention the free finishing music checklist. It's a checklist I've made just for you guys. It'll help you finish more music, and some, it's something that I put together using stuff that I implement in my daily practice of making music, so I hope it helps you guys. So let's talk about computers. Computers are my forte. Maybe you're trying to upgrade, maybe you're just trying to get your first computer for music production. The first thing you want to decide is which operating system you want to run. You could run Windows or you could run Mac or you could run Linux. I've never met a single person who runs Linux. Mac is known to be more user friendly. So for less computer savvy people like me, Mac just works better for me. If you plan on producing in Logic, you'll have to have a Mac operating system. All other DAWs run on Windows, so you can pretty much take your pick from here. It really comes down to how familiar you are with how that operating system works. Now, rather than list out a couple of different computer models, I wanted to talk about the internal components of the computer, which are important. The first thing is the processor. What the processor does is it receives data that you input into it. So whenever you move your mouse or type on the keyboard, it processes that data and then gives you output, which is something appearing on your display or your screen. Now you might have heard of a processor having an, a certain amount of cores. Cores determine how fast your computer can run. The more cores you have, the more processing power your computer is gonna have. If you have more cores, you'll be able to do things faster in your computer. Things will load faster. You won't have to wait so long for something to export. Things Your computer can do a lot more at a faster speed. That speed is what we call the clock, and your computer's clock speed is usually measured in gigahertz. This, this is such and such processor, and it's got 3.2 gigahertz. They're talking about the speed there. That's how fast your computer can work. The second component is RAM, and RAM just stands for random access memory. What RAM is used for is accessing data quickly from your hard drive. The more RAM you have, the more things you'll be able to be doing at the same time. You'll be able to have multiple windows open at the same time, more plugins open at the same time. It doesn't improve your computer's performance speed like the processor does, but it helps you access the data from your hard drive a little bit quicker. Another thing that you should consider as well is your hard drive space. Make sure you pick a computer that has a big enough hard drive. I would say minimum 500 gigs. You should probably shoot for a terabyte or more and get a solid state or an SSD drive if you can. And the last one is the display. Now the display is probably, and it's not an internal component with your computer. Some computers don't even come with a display. Uh, I know some people who use a TV as their display. The display is more of a luxury feature. When you have more screen real estate, you, you're going to be able to see more in detail and you'll be able to have plugins a lot smaller and see and read things on the plugins without them having to be huge and take up your entire screen. It also makes it really nice to look at as well. Having that 4K display really makes the, the image pop a little bit more. And I, I don't know, it just, it just looks nice. So what do I recommend for music production? Well, rather than, like I said, I didn't want to give you guys specific models because there are, there are so many deals out there where on so many different computers that if you just keep in mind these metrics, you should be good for buying a new computer. Uh, processor speed, I would always recommend four cores, quad core processor at minimum, and that is clocked at a 3.8 gigahertz or above. For RAM, you're gonna need at least eight gigabytes of RAM. If you have less than that, your computer is it's gonna you're gonna have to load things from your hard drive constantly. It's just not conducive to your workflow. You need at least eight gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so before you go out and buy your new computer, here are a couple of things I want you to remember. Number one is don't buy used. The more your computer gets used, the, the slower it's gonna run and you have no idea how much the computer you're buying has been used. So always try to buy new or at least refurbished. Don't try to build a computer if you don't know the process of doing it. You could save yourself the trouble. If you're not a computer guy like me, don't bother trying to learn how to build a computer 
if that's not something you really want to get into. If you're wanting to buy a Mac, you're not going to be able to customize it as much as you would a PC. PCs are really modular. You can take things out, replace them. Macs aren't that Macs aren't like that. MacBook Pro is the laptop version. You can't do that. You can't take them apart. You'll void the warranty. And if it breaks, you won't be able to get it fixed. Don't buy a computer just because somebody else uses it. You don't need to spend up for this big fancy computer if you don't if you don't want to. If it's not going to make you produce better if you have so and so's computer. And last point is don't buy a computer you can't afford. Computers are so cheap right now. You can get a good computer for really cheap. Don't overspend on a computer. I know Macs are really expensive. I I bought my Mac because I I have been using the Mac operating system since I was in high school. And it's just something that I'm comfortable with and that I understand. That's the reason why I stayed in that ecosystem. But if you're starting fresh and you maybe may not have a bunch of extra money to spend, don't bother spending up for a Mac. Don't overspend on a computer unless you really feel like you have to. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Remember, check out the free finishing music checklist. It's in the description of this video. It's absolutely free and it'll help you guys finish more music. And I'll see you next Friday.